Hey, uh, well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is uh, Tom Mitchell with uh, Flagship Solutions Group. Uh, this is uh, a part of a three-part series. This is part number three. Uh, the first two parts, in case uh, you didn't join, uh, we had a part one on April 15th uh, that talked about uh, productivity of your remote workforce. Uh, and then the second part uh, was a week later on uh, April 27th, uh, and it was uh, titled Enhancing uh, Security Posture. Uh, we have those videos available, a uh, record uh, that you can go back and look to. But today we have uh, uh, an exciting new area uh, with one of our key partners, High Trust. And with us today is Mike Turner and Wayne Lewandowski uh, to go over uh, a, a, a topic called creating a secure infrastructure with, with remote uh, administration. Uh, so with that, I am going to turn it over to uh, Mike and Wayne to take us through. This is a 30-minute video, uh, a 30-minute presentation. Uh, I would ask that uh, uh, you can use your Q&A section uh, on, your, uh, on your Zoom meeting here uh, to ask any questions that may uh, come into your head, uh, you know, during the presentation, and we'll get to those questions. Uh, and then, of course, we'll be monitoring uh, the chat as well if you have anything there. So with that, uh, Wayne and Mike, uh, it's all yours. Thanks, Thanks Tom. Welcome, everyone. Uh, as Tom had said, if you have some questions, please go ahead and put those in the Q&A. My counterpart, Wayne, who is SVP of sales over here at High Trust, will take care of uh, either answering them himself, which uh, most likely probably won't happen because he's a sales guy versus a technical guy, but uh, we'll get those to the end of the presentation and uh, um, we'll answer those. If I see those during the presentation and they align to what we're talking about, I'll answer them uh, right in the presentation. So please keep those coming and cue those up. Uh, Wayne, anything before we kick off? No, go ahead, Mike, thanks. Perfect. So as Tom had said, we're going to talk about high trust and in an offering we call Cloud Control Foundation. So we'll dig right into that. So we offer or our customers come to us with a, a number of different use cases or asks in the environment. I'm not going to go through those today. Uh, we're going to talk about automating compliance tasks. With that said, post conversation today if you have some comments or questions or want to dig into the broader topic and solution from high trust please reach out to the flagship please reach out to us clearly our emails are in the first slide of this and we'll get back to you and we can either schedule something that's more focused on the topic at hand today or the broader solution and how we're working across the solution set in these use cases as well as with flagship so please uh, don't hesitate to reach out Again, we're gonna be talking about automated compliance tasks. So as we take one last look, uh, this is a broad spectrum of those use cases and as we drill down into some of the capabilities of the overall solution from High Trust. We call this our security policy framework, which allows us visibility, insight, and control into our virtual state both, or virtual estate both on-premise, off-premise, so basically private cloud, public cloud, and hybrid cloud. And as we talked about, we're gonna talk about High Trust Cloud Control Foundation today. Foundation is going to allow us to provide some visibility control policy enforcement across VMware, and that includes VMware vSphere as well as NSX. That also includes Amazon Web Services or AWS, and also your container services, whether you're using plain vanilla Kubernetes or OpenShift or a number of other different container platforms. So we'll dig into this. We talked about, uh, here's, we talked about some of those capabilities or the larger scale capabilities. The two that we're really gonna dig into today are gonna be unified logging and reporting and configuration and compliance assurance. We'll do those in reverse order and talking about those because everything really leads into unified logging and reporting. When we say configuration and compliance assurance, there's two pieces to this. We'll dig into this a little bit more, but what we really mean there is what we're seeing our customers is we have some customers that are highly focused on compliance, right? So how am I meeting things like 
HIPAA, GDPR, PCI, how am I uh, aligning to standards like NIST 853? Or I may be looking more from a configuration standpoint. So within my virtual estate, I may be looking at, you know, for example, using VMware as, uh, as an example. How am I making sure that simple settings like NTP and firewall and SSH and all of these different configuration settings are consistently uh, the same and that I don't have virtual admins that are uh, in and out of the infrastructure and potentially impacting those configuration settings. So we'll talk about both of those, right? T traditionally today, the way that those things are done are manual, right? They're manual assessment, or sometimes we may have home, homegrown scripts that we're running and, and we see a big output that's text-based. And then to remediate those, in some cases you may have scripts to help you with some of that remediation, but a lot of times you're gonna be using manual steps to go through those remediations. So what do we wanna do? We wanna make sure that we're assessing and that we're remediating in an automated, uh, in an automated way and, and on a, a scheduled interval. Uh, so we'll talk about that. We also will need to make sure that out of the box that we align to some regulatory, uh, the regulatory as well as frameworks. Um, and then we want to make sure that from an enterprise perspective, that uh, that we can we can handle this across our entire uh, infrastructure, right? Whether it be VMware on-prem, VMware on the cloud, AWS, or Kubernetes and, and containers throughout. So it all starts with automating the compliance lifecycle via our compliance engine. And there's four main pieces to this. First off, as you can imagine, it's defining the standard. And defining the standard happens one of two ways. Defining the standard is, hey, I already understand what the standard is, right? It could be PCI, HIPAA, SOX, uh, could be NIST 853, could be GDPR for international uh, businesses. So. Out of the box, we have a number of templates. We'll talk through that. I've showed that a little bit more, but understanding what the standard we're aligning to. But then there's going to be some situations, right? We talked about compliance uh, a couple minutes ago, that maybe we need to go through all of the operations and understand what our configuration uh, uh, needs are and build some customized templates that align to our configuration needs. So we're going to define that standard. We're going to go out and we're going to then assess the environment. Right, we want to go out and we're going to want to look at all of our virtual uh, resources, right? whether they be VMware, whether they be AWS or Kubernetes. And then we're going to want to take stock in what the assessment has told us, right? Uh, based off of where we need to be from a compliance standpoint, are we or aren't we compliant? The next piece is that remediation step. How do we remediate what we've found to be out of compliance or out of the configuration parameters that we're looking for. We call these out independently and we do have some organizations that will go through a period of just doing assessment and uh, you know once through uh, and take a look at that and then go back through and do a remediation uh, of that environment. But then going forward what we see is the merging of those two um, or a combination of both. We may take uh, standard, right, PCI, we may, may do a PCI scan on a weekly, monthly basis to understand what our drift potentially is, and then go back and do a, man, a manual or an automated remediation. But what we might also do is with the, let's say, the configuration components of this, is we may put a configuration uh, assurance template together that is going to not only assess, but when it finds a parameter out of, param out of the stated parameters or scope, we're gonna go ahead and remediate that upon assessment of it not being compliant. So we kind of mush those two together, if you will. And then the last piece is we wanna refine those standards potentially. Uh, refining those standards could be, uh, if I'm building that standard and we're basing it off of a custom template, maybe some new operations get added within the, within the framework and we wanna add those operations. Maybe the standard has been revised from PCI, you know, version you know, 2.2.1 to 3.0, uh, you, you know, whatever that case, or an iteration in NIST 853. So we're gonna go back and redefine, or at least understand if we need to redefine those standards. Let me start back up at the top. So what makes up or what goes into some of these standards or defining that standard? 
there's a number of pieces that we're looking at from the standpoint of uh, the assessment component, right? And, and those break out into things like ES, the ESSI servers and NSX managers, uh, as well as vCenter. So those pieces under VMware, right? We're looking for things like, is SSH enabled? Is there a certain acceptance level of VIBs? Um, what standard are we using? PCI, DISA, HIPAA, GDPR. We also assess the virtual container. So for those of you familiar with the VMware uh, implementation or vSphere implementation, every VM, so not the OS itself, but the VM, the virtual container that it sits in, has a number of settings that we can check for, right? That is is a virtual floppy allowed to be attached? Is a virtual CD allowed to be attached? Um, what, uh, you know, what other pieces can I add from a virtual switch or virtual NIC? Those types of things all have different configurations that we can, we can look to. And then on the Kubernetes, Kubernetes side, right? Some of the same things that you see from the, the ESX side and the NSX configurations, as well as in, in AWS, right? We have some of those same things, but as we get into AWS, we can look at things like, uh, do we have S3 containers out there that don't have permissions on them, right? I think we can all agree that the biggest data breaches or at least customer breaches from the standpoint of AWS has been around uh, S3 buckets that have been in config configured improperly when it comes to permissions, external permissions. So that's one thing that we can show you. And that's not just on a single bucket, that's across all of your security groups inside your AWS account. We can also look at things like what security groups have SSH open, right? That's a big one, especially on the, on the AWS side. On the ESX side, uh, on the VMware side, you know, we have a lot of customers that, that think that it's uh, very important to make sure that we're turning off SSH. But that's a different uh, use case generally, where they allow their administrators to turn on SSH, but then on a nightly basis, they may come back and run a remediation template that disables it until the next time a, an admin needs it. So opening it up for acceptable use, but making sure that we're closing the door once we're done. Mike, just bringing up a, a quick point here too, and hopefully, uh, most of the folks in attendance are appreciating the, the fact of what Mike's talking about here is so it's this continuous loop that becomes critically important. And we found that customers, be it in commercial or in the public sector side, both appreciate this fact that it does create this continual state of compliance. This is one of the things that I assume is attractive to those that are in attendance here is one that elimination or, or close to it of that manual intervention because when you do have a breach, of course, it's gonna be an unexpected event. And at some point, the auditors are gonna come in and ask what was the state of the environment when that occurred. And without having this automation component that spans not only the data center, but what is now practically the enterprise, which includes third-party environments such as AWS or, or other environments that may be similar, VMware, or could be in a container room. So this, this reach across that single plane of management in that continuous loop becomes an incredibly important component to that foundational area of staying compliant, which has some security elements, and then building on that with other measures such as encryption, policy controls, et cetera. Great points, thanks Wayne. Uh, sure. Couldn't have said it better. So as we look at what makes up our policies, this is a couple of screenshots. Again, uh, we're not gonna have time today to get into the product and show a bit of a demo, but post uh, webinar, please reach out. We're happy to show you how this works, how we can go through and set these policies up, edit these policies, use these policies um, to get that compliance state that Wayne was talking about. So what we're seeing here is actual screenshots of a compliance template. In, in this case, it's the PCI, 3.2.1 template. So not only are we assessing for certain operations or have certain operations built into the template, we actually map them back into and cross-reference into the publication itself, right? So if I know this might be a little bit uh, hard on the eyes, but if we look down to the bottom left-hand corner, we see a little red box that limit virtual machine log file size and number. 
that uh, maps all the way back up into the operation itself. Under the operation, we have additional information that includes how that, from severity, how PCI, DSS ranks that, what type of uh, category. So that's for the compute node. Uh, if we go down a little bit farther, it tells us that it's assess and remediate. But then it also gives us a reference to the PCI DSS documentation. So it'll take us directly to the section. And as we look up under PC, under the PCI guidance, under that uh, guideline, it we map it all the way into 10.7, retain audit trail history for at least one year. So we can show all of that. A couple of things in that middle box under the operation itself, there's a couple boxes that we didn't highlight, but I'll talk about just very quickly. We'll see that there's parameters. So as we start to remediate, if there's parameters like enable, disable that we want to set for this, or a log size, um, size, uh, time, and date, which if we look at the standard, it tells us for one year. So under parameters, that would give us how long we want to uh, set that setting to and retain that data for. Remediation steps, what that shows us is if I were to take manual remediation steps, how would I do that? How would I go into VMware in this, uh, or vCenter in this case, and actually what steps would I take to remediate that and make those changes? Great thing is we're gonna do that for you, but we wanna make sure that you're fully aware and you have that information um, at your fingertips. So as we double click on this, or actually I guess go back and open the uh, aperture a bit, this is showing us our entire or a good portion of the out of the box templates. We'll notice that they're in this, there's custom system templates and custom templates. System templates are the out of the box templates. We're custom, as you might uh, imagine, are templates that we've either made copies of system templates and modified or we've created on our own. As we move over towards the as, as we move over, over towards the middle, we also then understand what type of resources these templates are uh, to be run on, right? Whether it's an AWS, ESSI, um, or Kubernetes. So from that being said, then as we move to the right, we also then understand how many operations, so how many checks are in that? And as we go down the, uh, the stack, we'll see, hey, under vSphere, HIPAA, security standards, we have 102 checks we have 102 checks in that category. And as I said, we have about 175, 180 checks today. And those, and those numbers go up exponentially uh, year over year, but those go up by 10 or 20 every month. And the interesting piece about that is what we allow you as a customer to do is to have operations added. So if today you're doing some things with some custom scripts that may not be uh, fall into, let's say, the VMware hardening guide standards, which is what we base a lot of this out for, for vSphere. If you have some unique scripts that you're testing for some settings or setting some things, we can take those scripts, we can take those operations, and we can turn those operations into uh, secure packages that using this update button in the right-hand corner, we can go ahead and update those operations into uh, the platform. We can put those into one of these custom uh, custom, uh, custom templates, or we can put them into their own template. So we can take what you have today, reuse that, and build that into this automated uh, methodology. So that being said, let's uh, take a look at logging, right? So we've talked about compliance, assessment, and remediation. Let's talk about logging a little bit. So on top of being able to filter and see all of the results, the individual check results from those compliance scans, we also give you the ability to see everything that's happening from a transaction standpoint from your administrators into these virtual environments, right? Whether it be public cloud, private cloud, or hybrid cloud. And just to use some simple examples, I see very, very granular transactional pieces of information like stopping a VM, starting a VM, disabling a switch, creating or deleting a VPC or a firewall. Um, so all of these transactions we see at a very granular level. We can then integrate with your log aggregation tools or SIM tools and um, 
and for long-term retention or for correlation with other security systems. So we're going to give you uh, that granular visibility. And here's just a real quick example. You say, hey, we already have some of that visibility and some of that logging in our, uh, in our system. This is just an example of vSphere and the differences there. So a traditional vCenter log, if I were to delete a hard disk, is I see very little. All I see is a reconfigure happen. If you look at the high trust log, we see exactly what happened. We see exactly who did it. We see exactly where it came from. So we can do things like advanced troubleshooting and root cause analysis on configuration issues. So the last two things I'll talk about before we dig into some questions is, hey, it's great that we have all that logging. We can do all of these things from a automated compliance assessment remediation, but I really wanna see what are, how do we look at that? How do we understand at a very high level and quickly where we are as a state of compliance? And you'll see here, we have a global compliance dashboard. It calls out how many resources we have in vSphere, Kubernetes, AWS. If we were looking at this in the product, as we hovered over these, we would get the number of assets that are through the middle, which are the make up the resource type, and then the compliance state around the outside. We'll see that there's some green resources on the east, uh, vSphere side that are compliant. We also get a con uh, configuration hardening trending line. We can drill into this and make this very, very granular, or we can make this very broad. And we, if we were in the product, we would see how many resources and what resources as we hovered over this uh, trending bar. And we, can, and we can make for understanding very easily how compliant or what kind of drift we may have from uh, month to month. And the last piece is if we were to double click on one of those resources, we see here we have three ESXi hosts, what version, sockets, a bunch of information but it also tells us what templates were run against that. And we could click on that and we'd get a template and then we would drill down and we could see what checks failed, what che checks were um, successful. And then we understand just a number of different things about uh, the actual resources that we're doing with scans on. So with that said, that's the presentation today. I'm gonna to take a look over here and see what type of uh, Questions we have, and we'll answer a couple questions. We got about seven, eight minutes left. So, first question: um, how, do, how long does a typical environment take to deploy? Is there a lot of admin overhead in the center? So, what we talked about today is cloud control foundation, and with that, it's that logging, reporting, automated compliance, and remediation. For that portion of the solution, it is very, very easy to set up. Um, one would say in a, you know, in a medium to small to medium environment, you could set this up and have this scanning your infrastructure within a, within an hour, a couple of hours. Um, it's a couple of appliances that need to be networked. They need to be connected for HA connectivity, but going forward from an administrative perspective, more of the administration is going to come in the, in the beginning, right? Setting some of those templates, defining that that uh, schedule and what the template is, and then somebody looking at those results on uh, you know, whatever that interval may be. Uh, if you're scanning once a week, then you may have somebody check in and take a look at the compliance dashboard you know, on Monday if you ran the scans over the weekend. So very, very quick. Another one, is there different functionality based on the environment being in the data center versus the cloud? Uh, there, there is, right? As we talked about or showed that big list of capabilities, as you can imagine, uh, with the solutions such as VMware on-prem, we're going to get a, a slightly different subset of features than we might with AWS or Kubernetes. But by and large, um, by and large, the feature set is pretty, uh, pretty, pretty aligned across the board, um, and that being uh, compliance assessment configuration, it's role-based access control. Um, we get things in Kubernetes, such as vulnerability assessments for uh, our worker nodes or for our containers and images. There's not that aspect in VMware. So we do get a little bit of disparate functionality depending that, or that's more platform specific than, uh, than having it somewhere or another. Um, how easy is it at templates? Very easy. Uh, it, it's, it's a matter of taking a system template, cloning that template, 
going in and adding or subtracting operations. And then where it's an operation that you can do remediation, you're going to go in there and if it's a binary operation and on or off, you're going to you know, enable or disable whatever that operation is checking for, or it may be something that's more explicit where you have to define a, uh, a value or a time frame or something to that extent. Uh, last question, I'll let uh, Wayne take this. How is the product priced? Wayne, you want to take that real quick? Sure, be glad to. And specifically as it relates to uh, uh, Cloud Control Foundation, much like the enterprise version of Cloud Control, it's based on a per socket basis. So the good news is there that if you're in an industry that is imposed uh, to meet multiple regulatory requirements, it makes no difference to us. So all the out of the box templates that Mike had talked about are included any manipulation that you may have because we have certain customers that say hey I'm adhering to my banking requirements or my HR requirements for HIPAA uh, and healthcare but we want to do a little more here in our organization all that's included we, we, we do not care how much uh, of the environment that we're we're uh, supporting as long as it's constrained to the number of sockets that that we sit in, in front of. So it's pretty pretty simple. And also what we will do is we'll work with flagship to not only make sure you have a copy of the link to this presentation for reference, but also uh, send you links on our site where you can download a trial version of the software. To Mike's point, this along with our key manager are two areas that we're very comfortable with people really going through that uh, implementation to kick the tires by themselves with just maybe a light touch from either us or, or flagship. So I think you'll find that it is really a plug and play type of capability. Absolutely, thanks Wayne. Um, sure. So with that being said, there's one last question. I think you kind of cover, covered it, but just to, to make sure. Um, out of the box, we probably have about, it's probably 20-ish templates. Right, anything from you know the common, you know the common things that we're talking about, right? HIPAA, PCI. There's FedRAMP, a couple different levels of FedRAMP, a couple different levels of NIST 853, 171, uh, GDPR. So yeah, probably 18 to 20 templates out of the box. All of those templates uh, are part of the solution. So again, as Wayne had mentioned, there's no limitation or costs for uh, more templates or out of the box templates or creating your own templates. So, so with that said, we got about two minutes left. I'll let uh, I'll kick it back to Tom. See if Tom wants to wrap up and uh, and roll us out of this. And I I appreciate everybody uh, taking time out of their day to to listen to us. And I uh, hope we hear from you soon. Hey, Mike, uh, Mike and Wayne, thank you very much for uh, uh, doing that. The only thing I wanted to add, uh, and Wayne, I know you touched on it a little bit, is the uh, services around this. So flagship being a business partner of, of, uh, of high trust, uh, we have the services capabilities to help you through this. Although it's a pretty straightforward implementation, we also know that one size doesn't fit all. And there's always that customization that needs to go on there. So, uh, we stand ready to help you with those as well. So we're engaged very closely with high trust on the services front. So that's kind of our value add. Absolutely, and, and I'd like to just underscore that as well, Tom. That's an important part is that the things that High Trust are offering are really a piece to the puzzle. And anybody relating to either compliance or cybersecurity knows it's a layered approach and we expect our valued partners like you to assist with that navigation with the customer. Thanks, Wayne. Sure. All right, uh, thanks everyone. Uh, 30 minutes of your time. We hope that this was uh, short but sweet. Uh, if you have any follow-on questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be sending out uh, some follow-on uh, communication, uh, the presentation files and so forth for your keeping. And uh, of course, uh, we'll give you the information on the part one and part two of our series two for you to go back and listen to if you'd like. Thanks everyone and have a, a nice and safe uh, rest of your week. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks everyone.